The children I have talked to have all had to murder before the age of two. I mentioned that last week and we, mm -hmm. we kind of went right on past it. Mm -hmm. That is something that is beyond anything I could comprehend. Right. But in some way, whether with the help of an adult's hand over theirs or by having them practice, by getting them excited to be part of the adult scene. These children have never seen a normal life, for goodness sakes. Uh, they do murder. And the evil thing that happens is they really believe they want to. They, they want to do what the older people are doing. And they're praised for that. And that becomes their goal, to be like the adults and mm -hmm. to do these horrible things. There is a little part in them that I believe we all have, that natural, good, God-given part that knows it's wrong, but in a group and in the excitement of everything, they want to do that. They enjoy the sex. Children are capable of enjoying the sex. That was something I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, why would they fight against it? A child will eat a bag of candy if you give it to them. They will take part in these things willingly. When they get out and begin to talk, that's very difficult for them to realize. Uh, we didn't realize it at first, that they actually wanted to do that, and that is part of the very sophisticated brainwashing job that they do on all of these children. The part that made me to believe this child's story was that when he finally said this baby, he talked about several, but this particular baby had been killed stabbed again, different way, but stabbed. He curled up in a fetal position. He was nine years old when he was telling the story. He curled up in a fetal position and his eyes got real glazed and he said, they cooked that baby on the grill. Oh my gosh. And I thought, he has really flipped out. I mean, I didn't know. And he said, oh gross, it smelled like rotten chicken or rotten deer. Mm. He then went on and told us how they would cut out the heart, or they would cut off the sex organs. They would save them in the refrigerator, in the freezer. And this is a very typical thing that these kids talk about. They worship the sex organs, and they kept it for another ceremony. They will always use these bodies one way or another. I didn't get any answers from that child about what happened to the bodies. Where did they go? Eventually, um, the little ones that I was talking about first talked about throwing the babies in the fire. And I asked about that, and uh, you mean they were dead and then they threw them in the fire, and, and the littlest one said, no, no, them was alive, and them threw them, you know, like this. The most horrible story about fire that I have to tell, and this is extremely, extremely disturbing, um, was a little girl, she is a teenager, as she was telling me this story. And she was describing the barn where they used to go to have their meetings. And uh, she told how they would gather outside of the barn and do their chanting. And then as they went on into the barn, they would be split into different groups. And uh, she was never with any of her family. They all went to different places. And I asked her where she had to go, and she said, oh, I was always in the burning room. And as she went on and described the burning room, uh, I thought, how she came out of this with any sanity at all, I don't know. She was very small, very small child. Uh, they would take young children, and I were probably talking preschoolers, I don't think that they dealt much with the older ones, and they would hang them from a rafter in this barn. And there would be as many as five to ten hung in a row. And they would be fully clothed, which is unusual because frequently they are all naked. Mm -hmm. The children, like this girl, were all given candles. And, and you can picture the ceremony as she described it. And the candles were lit one by one. Then the adults would go forward and they would pour from a cup some liquid on each of the children's clothing, which is obviously gasoline or kerosene. Mm -hmm. You know that then. And then after whatever it was they had to do, they would give the signal and these others would have to go forward and set the children on fire. Mm -hmm. When they were done, they would just cut them down. 
the first child that this girl had to kill was a cousin, a little cousin. And she talked about them being cut down and how they would draw a circle around the body. And when she, when she first told me those things, I knew she was telling the truth. It wasn't that, but I didn't understand it. And I still can't tell you every answer, but I know that circles are important. And during these rituals, they will draw the circles or in some way they will have a circle because they believe that these demons that come can't break through the circle to harm them. She had also told about how the parents would kneel outside that circle where the child had fallen to like pray to the child is what she said. I've been told by people that know a lot more than I do that the reason for all of this death and murder is because of the belief in the demons and the power that they can get from that. And these people believe that the more innocent the victim, the more horrible the death, the closer you are at the moment of death, the more magic is released and the more spiritual power, power they get.